Hi everyone, I am Alex and welcome back to the Chernobyl Uncharted series. We are for many years exploring the Chernobyl exclusion zone and spent there a lot of time, so this series is our attempt to share our insider's look to this unique territory. And this episode will be especially interesting, because we collected 10 really amazing historical facts about this area, which you probably never heard about. So like this video, subscribe to our channel and let's go! For those who want more, don't forget to check our Patreon page, we have there a lot of unique Chernobyl content. If you watched our previous episode, you have seen how complex and big the Chernobyl nuclear power plant is. But we discovered some historical documents that told us that actually what we can see now at the power plant site is very very different from what initially was planted there. In other words, the power plant could look this way. And even more, this power plant could appear in absolutely different place. And here a tiny historical background. So in 1966 the Soviet government creates a 10 year long plan of construction of new power plants, which included also nuclear power plants, and for this one they were proposed 16 different possible sites, in Kyiv region, in Zhytomyr region and in Vinnytsia region of Ukraine. After a long and complex analysis of their sites, it was narrowed down to one place, on the bank of the river of Pripyat. 4 kilometers away from the village of Kopachi and approximately 15 kilometers from the old district town named Chernobyl. At that time this project was called Central Ukrainian State Power Plant. The name Chernobyl it got only later. At the beginning they were proposed three different options for reactors, RBMK-1000, RK-1000 and VVR reactor. So what you see is the very first RBMK-1000 version, but a never built variant. At first glance this looks close to what actually was built. There are two reactors placed in one compound with a shared ventilation chimney and a shared hydrogen station. But however there are some differences, because if you look on the map you will see a totally different position and a shape of the cooling pond and a less compacted layout of the entire industrial site. The reactors inside had to be placed also in a different way, and also there are less buildings and many are actually different. For instance, there are three pumping stations that take the water directly from the channel, and there are no second stage pressure pools. And ABK-1 administrative building is also pretty different. This initial project was declined in favor of RK-1000, but later from economical consideration it happened in 1969, the ministry changed its mind and they eventually decided to return back to RBMK-1000, but they used at this time the project of the Leningrad nuclear power plant as a base one. And here we come to the second fact, the city of Pripyat that never was. What you can see now in the city of Pripyat is of course very destroyed, but anyway it has a very little to do with the initial project of the city. The city by its initial plan had to be significantly smaller and most of its objects here placed in a totally different way. In reality only the existing district 1 is less more matching that very drawing. One of the most notable differences is a river port at the north with something that likely looks like an artificial island. And this how the river port had to look like. It's a totally different architecture, you can see it on all visualizations here. It's a distinct style of the late 60s, yet not an epoch of the shiny white modernist buildings, but already a kind of a design approach that would balance between a good look and draconic limitations imposed to architecture before. This is how it had to look in the city center, and this had to be the community center. Can you imagine how much terraforming did they need to apply to actually build this big facility? The next fact is, there are few places that disappeared from the map way before the Chernobyl disaster because of construction of the power plant. One of the big tasks that had to be solved is the changing of the river bed of the river of Pripyat to build the cooling pond. So on that place was the village of Nagorci and little bit northern was a village of Pidlisny. Both of them were demolished and eventually site of Nagorci has been flooded. From Nagorci remain literally two things. One of them is relatively well known, that's a second world war monument, which is located between the cooling towers and the fish farm, not so far from the unfinished reactor 5 and 6. 
And the uh, second one is the cemetery, which is uh, on the very edge of the island. Uh, practically no one knows about it. I have been personally only once there. And uh, no one visits it. About Pidlisny it's almost the same. There is also only one remain, a tiny cemetery. But I would say that cemetery is probably one of the creepiest places in the entire Chernobyl zone. And the reason is, it is extremely contaminated, so no one goes there. Actually, there are no even signs on the crosses, uh, and you know, there is such a joke in the zone. Uh, if you want to find a way to Pidlisny Cemetery, just stick out the dosimeter from the car window, and where it clicks, there you drive. These pictures have been made by Alexander Naumov, our very good friend, unfortunately, he deceased already. Uh, he was a police officer in the zone for many years, and uh, he was documenting uh, such a details around especially zone in 90s so that's a quite a precious heritage to see now in the full version of this video that you can find on our patreon page uh, you can learn about Semihodi village uh, which was on the site of the city of Pripyat so the city was gradually replacing it but returning to Pripyat uh, there is one more quite interesting fact Many buildings you can see in Pripyat actually are very unique for that very city. They were either designed specifically for it, or the typical projects were reworked for this very place. Take for example the central square. There are three notable facilities, a shopping center and a restaurant, then the energetic palace of culture, and then of course the famous Hotel Polisia. A shopping center has been built by individual project with a giant underground storage where even trucks could drive in. Partly because of this, this building for a long time has been unfinished and honestly being a source of jokes among those who lived in the city. When it was completed, it became, without overestimation, one of the very first Soviet supermarkets. But it worked for a very short period of time, so there are no known pre-disaster pictures of its interior. By the way, that brown tiles on the walls were imported from Czechoslovakia, which says a lot about the status of that city. It was not common to have foreign decorations for uh, Soviet stores. The Hotel Polisia, with its famous observation floor on the top, is also one of a kind thing. By the way, the shot I made literally a few days ago, that's how does it look now. So, in the base of the Polisia Hotel was a typical project, but it had to look this way, significantly smaller and actually not so decorated. Well, who knows, maybe the last moment modifications were the reason why it was actually built from the very different types of bricks, which causes nowadays a rapid deterioration. By the way, this picture is from the exceptionally rare export brochure of the power plant, which you can find on our Patreon in pretty high resolution. The same situation was with the Palace of Culture. In original standardized project, there were no this amazing glass facade, and overall it looked very more primitive. The next fact here could be the world's biggest reactors. It's a very well-known thing that, at the time of disaster, Chernobyl nuclear power plant consisted of four operating reactors and two more were under construction at a separate site, which is nicknamed the island. But this was just a half of what could appear here, because according to different sources, here could be from 10 to 12 reactors, and this second half had to be located on another side of the Pripyat river, probably somewhere near Krivahora village. In the past, I had some talks about this uh, with the Chernobyl nuclear power plant engineers, and they told me that there were various visions of which type of reactors to use. It could be VVR reactors already, and in this case, it likely would look similar to Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. This is the biggest nuclear power plant in Europe, and unfortunately, right now it is in a very big danger because it is occupied by Russian forces. But one more vision included using a further development of RBMK, which called reactors RBMK P2400 or even RBMK P4800, which would be several times bigger and more powerful than RBMK1000 used originally, and they would have a rectangular active zone. These reactors remain just a paper concept, 
so did the further expansion. Oh, well, frankly, probably it's even good that that was never done, because in case if this power plant site would exist during the Chernobyl disaster, it would be covered practically completely with the northern track of fallout that happened. And if it would not happen, um, then the uh, question would be what to do with such a giant site in the end of lifetime of these very very big graphite reactors, which are pretty complex to disassemble even in the, their existing version. Before we continue, I remind you, if you have something you are interested about Chernobyl and you would like to have it in our future videos, just feel free to write that in the comments, we would be happy to create something for you. And uh, let's move on. So, nevertheless, two reactors back in the S4986 were under construction, Unit 5 and Unit 6. So here we come to one more fact, the future of Pripyat that never happened. The giant sandy area at the north of Pripyat, which is visible on Google Maps, is a site of plant districts that would cover the further expansion of the city, because new units would require new people to work on them. And there are visions how it could look. There are no much detailed information and details about particular planet buildings here, but it is visible that existing Builders Avenue had to be expanded around to be eventually joined via the bridge with one of the oldest streets of Pripyat, the Street of Enthusiasts. These plans were never completed, and the sandy area became one of radioactive waste disposal sites, and the place where the bridge would be standing became one of isolation dumps. By the way, about that dumps, you can't even imagine how massive were the hydrotechnical works made in the zone after the Chernobyl disaster. We will have a pretty cool documentary about all of that, so don't forget to subscribe. The next fact, post-disaster use of Pripyat. I bet most of you watched the miniseries Chernobyl from the HBO and remember Boris Sherbina, the deputy head of the Soviet government. Uh, by the way, me and my good friend Alex Sirota were that two guys who were guiding the creators of the miniseries in the real zone. So we can recommend this movie as a good start point for getting interested in the subject, because many things there are really very well pictured. But real Boris Sherbina was a party functioner with a pretty descriptive approach. There is a document prepared and signed by him back after the disaster, where he explains his vision of the future of the zone. And here we can clearly see a suggestion of the gradual destruction of the city of Pripyat. Thanks God, it was not done, and Pripyat started to have a very interesting afterlife. It became an office and laboratory town, and in one of the early batch of documents of that period, which we are translating on our Patreon, there is described plan of use of the city in the future depending on the district. So, due to the very uneven contamination of districts, according to this plan, the first two had to become a training polygon of emergency services, or basically Spetsatom playground. District 3 had to be for various facilities, and the fourth and fifth for accommodation of the staff. Well, partly it was made, uh, not completely, but nevertheless many facilities were operating, starting from the Jupiter plant, where were based at the Spetsatom Special Enterprise, ending up with the swimming pool Azure, which uh, officially was a decontamination workshop for staff, where you could take a shower, for example, and also swim a little bit, and even the greenhouses that operated like laboratories uh, for radiobiology, and also they were growing their pot flowers, because everyone in Chernobyl would like to have a pot flower in their office, why not actually? With gradual destruction and deterioration of this infrastructure, all facilities were slowly moving to the town of Chernobyl, and this great exodus ended up in the end of 90s. But still, some facilities are operating in Pripyat. The next fact is, while population will never return to Pripyat, there are places where people could officially return, and I do not mean the self-settlers in some villages. There are two villages that previously have been a part of the Chernobyl zone, but later were excluded from it. There are Nivetske and Cheremoshne villages located southern from the now-dead villages of Ilyntsi and Zamoshne. A clean-up and radiological surveys back in the end of 80s proved it was safe to return there. 
This, however, didn't change much because of their location, which is very, very remote. A uh, very little number of people now live there. And they were planning to exclude more villages from the zone, around a dozen, but this was never done. Comparing to this, a fact about elderly people who returned to the zone is very well known. On our channel you can find an amazing documentary we shot last winter, so you should surely check it. Let's move on. So, the next fact is, instead of the giant Chernobyl Arch, could be something absolutely different. If you watch at our previous episode, where we explain it in also about the object shelter or sarcophagus, you remember how complex was this structure to build. Too bad, from the very beginning, that was a temporary solution. Already from the end of the 80s started discussions about the shelter too, which after a lot of work ended up in the new safe confinement construction, the biggest movable structure on this planet. On our Patreon you can find a unique document from the early conference about the future of the shelter that took place back in 1992. At that time they were proposed various projects, from turning the sarcophagus to a giant pyramid made of soil, up to concreting it in a giant concrete block. Most of the suggestions were rejected, because they would make the shelter less controllable. And eventually they were selected three final options, called console, dock caisson and the arch. And the last one is what you eventually can see now. The last fact for today is pretty special, and probably it's the last thing you would expect to hear. So, Duga had all the chances to become a wind power plant. And the story behind is pretty simple, because in 2000 the nuclear power plant was stopped and the need in electric energy in the zone didn't disappear. So there appeared an idea to install on the very top of this giant radar antenna, which is already disused for many years, a lot of such a spiral rotors that uh, would catch the wind and generate the electricity. Uh, I had somewhere even a render from a original project, I cannot find it, so I very quickly in Photoshop I made such crude like imitation, so you can understand how had it to look. Uh, and uh, it was never approved, uh, never done, and maybe it's even for good, because uh, we actually otherwise would not have admission there and we would not be able to study that location. By the way, in the future, here will be a one of a kind documentary about Duga, and trust me, you will love it. So don't forget to subscribe. Tell us in the comments what do you think about all of that. That's it for today, so thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe and check our Patreon page, because there you will find a lot of unique Chernobyl content. See you next time!